Hello, and welcome to Deconstructing Phil. Today we're going to have our first ever video weblog. Now you may be wondering why exactly today are we switching over to the video weblog instead of the normal essay weblog style that we've been accustomed to. And that's because today we're dealing with a very difficult, broad, and comprehensive set of questions, namely structuralism, post-structuralism, and deconstructionism. Now, all of these issues deal with the concept of the text and interpreting it through signs, signifiers, signified. Now, the first issue that we may come up against is, is the Dr. Phil show in fact a text that can be analyzed through signs, signifiers, and what is signified? Now, many people would say, no, Dr. Phil show is not a text. But if we look at Roland Barthes' essay, from work to text, we may come up with a very different answer. He provides us with seven different ways of deciding whether we're looking at a text and what is involved with a text. The first thing he says is that the text is not to be thought of as an object that can be computed. The work is a fragment of substance occupying a part of the space of books in a library, for example. But the text is a methodological field. Now we can definitely see the Dr. Phil show as a methodological field. Look at, for instance, the fact that he has his own television show with many different shows in making up the show itself. He appears on other people's show, such as Letterman, Larry King. He has several of his own books. He has his own website that he constantly tells us to go to. And there are numerous secondary sources, such as our own and other weblogs that deal specifically with Dr. Phil, clearly making him his own methodological field. Now, next Bartz tells us that the text does not stop at good literature. It cannot be contained in a hierarchy, even in a simple division of genres. What constitutes the text is on the contrary, or precisely, its subversive force in respect of old classifications. So while we might be tempted to say that someone like Kafka is good literature and is also the antithesis of everything that Dr. Phil is, that is in no way a way of saying that Dr. Phil and his show does not constitute a text. Thirdly, Bart says, a work conceived, perceived, and received an integrally symbolic nature is a text. Everything about the Dr. Phil show is symbolic. The guests are supposed to in some way reflect society at large, but also ourselves. But at the same time, Dr. Phil is in his own way our own good conscience and the right, the moral authority that is supposed to be innate in all of us and society in general and part of the broader good. Fourthly, the Bart says, the text is plural. This is true in many different ways in general, and especially with the Dr. Phil show. For instance, we know that there are many different shows. There's a Monday's show, there's Tuesday's show, there's Wednesday's show, there's Dr. Phil house shows, there's Dr. Phil now shows. These all make up the Dr. Phil show that is the text. On the other hand, we can say that there's the text which is the Dr. Phil show that broadcasts, for instance, this evening. And there are many different interpretations of it. There's mine. There's yours. There's Dr. Phil show fans. There's Robin, his wife. And these are all different ways that the text is plural. The sixth way that Barthes tells us about the text is that the work is normally the object of consumption. So we can say that the work is what is being marketed as far as the Dr. Phil show that gets the advertisements that is branded onto weight loss products. That is the work. But the text is what we're interpreting. It's the meaning. So we say that the fifth part is unimportant as well as the seventh which relates to the sixth. But if we make a checklist of one, two, three, four, and six according to Barthes of what makes up a text and how we look at a text, in every way the Dr. Phil show is a text. In fact in some cases it appears to be a prime example. So this at first doesn't appear to be a problem. We're happy 
it means that the Dr. Phil show is a text, and we can look at it as far as sign, signifier, signified, and put it in the general theory of structuralism, post-structuralism, and deconstructionism. But the last word that Barthes gives us about a text is, in fact, a little bit unnerving if we put it in the context of the Dr. Phil show. Because what he says is that the theory of the text can coincide only with the practice of writing, in the sense that we need to be writing our own Dr. Phil show in order to make it a text. But what he also says is that the text is where no language has a hold over any other. This is exactly what today's show was about, and the exact reason why we bring this to our attention today. Let's look, for example, at what Jane said. Jane was the mother-in-law, and today's episode was all about a mother-in-law of a couple that is about to be married, and they disinvited her from the wedding because of a feud that has recently started between this family. Now, Jane said, I don't have words for how this makes me feel. This is exactly the problem. She doesn't have words for how it makes her feel, and yet she is using words. That is, in a sense, the oxymoron, and also the very heart of the Dr. Phil show. In order to examine this better, let's look at Saussure, the father of structuralism, and in a way post-structuralism, or rather, the father of everything that has to do with modern linguistics.